Welcome back to the Power Public YouTube channel. Today we're going to be running you through the assembly process of this Rotax Max race engine. So let's get to it. So what we're going to do right here is this is how the battery comes from the factory. Now it's dry, it's got no acid in it. That comes separate. Read the instructions if you don't know what you're doing. But this comes in two parts. And what we're going to do, this foil will be pierced once we put that into there. So now you can see that the battery acid is actually bubbling away and that's going to drain down into the battery. Now what you want to do is, while that's draining into there, put it to one side and let the battery acid sort of bubble away for about 30 to 40 minutes. Uh, the battery will get a little bit warm and then you can put this guy on. It just slots in, you remove the bottles and put that over there and then seal it up and it's um, good to go for the life of the battery. Okay, so you can see here that the levels are a little bit different. Don't be alarmed, they will self-level once they are, uh, once the fluid drains into the battery. So once the acid has all drained out of your little bottles here, that's, throw that away, and then just leave this to one side for say 30, 40 minutes, and then we're gonna put the, the cap on and charge the battery. So the battery comes with this, some screw terminals. These little nuts just slide under there, and you will see how that goes into the, the harness later on. So for now, we'll just put them in there, just loosely. And we'll slide this over to one side and get on with the assembly process. So first up, we're gonna install the radiator. Okay, so we're gonna put the hoses on first. So slip on a hose clamp and chuck on the bottom radiator hose like so. And then you get your top radiator hose. Now, the fitting here is, sorry, the fitting here is pretty tight on this rubber hose. So if that is the case, get yourself a little bit of rubber grease and just lube up that edge. And then this rubber hose is gonna go on way easier. Like that. And you can also, once it's on, just rotate it around pretty easily because Obviously the radiator's out this way. So you just need a little bit of an angle on it. With this one, it's a lot easier to do that first and then just slip the hose clamps on. So grab your radiator and a pair of pliers and we're just gonna remove these caps. So before I put the radiator onto the hoses, I like to install this uh, radiator mount. And all I do there is slide it through. There is a M6 cap screw, little button head, and a washer. It's the very thin washer. So grab your M6 button head screw with a little thin washer and your bottle of Loctite, and just put a dab of that on there. Okay, we don't want this guy coming loose, and then Screw that into there like so. Four millimeter T-bar. So next up we've got the M8 cap screw here and it's got the little spring washer. Just same thing. I just put a little bit of Loctite here on the end of the thread. Slide it through the cylinder, and then we're going to grab this radiator. And first of all, what I do is I put the bottom radiator hose in, just like so. And then come up and do the top one, like so. And then you should be able to just hold the radiator with your left hand and get that Allen key started. And if you hold the mounting bar with the 13 millimeter ring spanner, you can just tighten up this Allen key, like so. Now we're ready to do up the hose clamps. So we're just gonna spin the Engine around so you can see that at home. Get the radiator flap out of the way. Just push it back there. It's got a little bit of a bell end on that uh, radiator outlet. And 
you just want to feel for the edge of the hose and the radiator then you can do this hose clamp up and that'll pull the radiator hose in nice and tight use a seven millimeter socket and it saves sort of the flat blade screwdriver sort of flaring those hose clamps out just makes it a bit neater and then this one here sometimes you've got to oh no, there you go to get it on uh, you've got to open it up but this one slipped over the top there and then just do him up nice and tight So another thing I like to do is take the radiator cap off and put that on the bench until you put some water in there. It's easy enough to sort of get lost up in the assembly and then start the engine up and run it without water because you've, you know, you're just dying to get out on the track. But if you take this one off, it's pretty easy to distinguish if you've got water or not and then you can just add the water, put the cap back on and you're good to go. So next up, we've got the fuel pump and fuel pump bracket and the air box support. So we're gonna put that on the engine right now. First up, remove the three cap screws here in the reed cage. Then this guy just bolts straight on, nice and simple. It's got, they even throw in a bit of fuel line for you. Finally, just double check that all these are tight with a Allen key. Well, I don't like to use the rattle gun too much because, for doing stuff up because it's pretty hard to tell what torque you're using. It's okay just to loosely do them up, but for any final assembly, just grab a uh, T-bar, Allen key, ring spanner, whatever it is for the job, and just do it up by hand. Okay, so the carburetor, nice and simple. That just goes straight into the, the rubber mounting block there and then just grab your 7 mil again or your Phillips head and just do that up and then that's ready to go. So the Rotax give us some of this uh, fuel line here but it's pretty tight you can see and it's pretty hard to get on and off. So what I like to do is just get a piece of normal fuel line, 6 millimeter diameter, throw that on there and then get the trusty circlet pliers, put them down in the side of the tube, make sure they're clean and just work it around a bit and that will flare flare the tube out a bit and it goes onto the carburetor piece of cake. So just do that and then slide him on there. No stress. Time for the air bolt. And the clip just fits over here on this plastic and just get a little hammer and hold that there. Just tap them on like that, and you can see here that it's got a little bit of a spring tension there with a captive nut, so that you can screw the two halves together. It's the same for all four. Okay, so before we insert the air filter and air filter screens, we've got to put the flanges in. So let's get to it. So this is a bit of a um, hold the tongue to a left sort of job, a bit like the other air filters. And you've just got to maneuver the rubber, go in there like that, get it on the edge. And then you can just force it over the edge like that and make sure that it's, there we go, snap, perfect. And you can just sort of go around the edge, just double check, and you can sort of see in there that the flange just pops onto the other side of the plastic and it's all good to go. This also is, um, you can rotate it 
to get the orientation of your airbox on your carburetor, but I'll show you that in a minute. Intake tubes are next. Now these are directional. This goes to the inside, this goes to the outside. So these things can be quite a mission to get in. They're really quite stiff. Um, so what I try to do there is just force it in like so. And then sometimes you can put some rubber grease that will help this go past the plastic. I'll show you how to do that. Let's just pull it back a little bit. Grab a bit of rubber grease and just Give it a little bit of a bit of lube across that face like so. And then that will aid in the assembly process. And then you can just get a Allen key, hold the airbox down and just push that into the groove like so. There's no easier way that I've found if you work one out an easier way than this please put it in the comment section below because I'd love to know what it is. <laughs> Righto, you can sort of see the grease, it's only rubber grease, it won't hurt anything. And then you can sort of just get this last bit in. Like so. And then if you go on the inside, you can see here it just hasn't quite come over the edge. If you just wiggle it a little bit, like that, the rubber lip will just flip on over and you're good to go. Just give it a little bit of a wiggle and that makes sure it's, it's all home and it's ready for the air filter. Okay, so we've got the air filter screens. These go either side of the air filter and they are directional. They've got a slight taper to the top and they go into the air box just like this. Grab the screen like so and put that into the top of the air box. Take the air filter out of its plastic wrapping and slot it into the air box just like this. And once you've got that in there, it'll want to flop up, but don't worry, it's only because it's new. If you get the top screen and put that in there just like so, bottom of the air box goes on next. And you, I just hold that there with my thumb because if you let go of that, the air filter can push the screen out and just sort of move your thumb, slap the two together and that's it. Now we've just got to install the two screws here and then it's ready to in install onto the engine. So before we put our airbox onto the carburetor, don't forget you've got to put the hose clamp on. So just put that on the rubber guy and pull it back so you can wiggle it on. And then move the fuel line and wiggle the airbox onto the carburetor. You can put the hose clamp into position and uh, grab your 7mm and just do that little hose clamp up just like so. And lastly, you can install your two M6 screws to hold the back of the airbox in. So the next thing we're going to do is install the coil, coil bracket, and the vacuum lines. Okay, so the coil bracket goes over here. You can just put the spark plug cap on, and then you've got that hole there, or this hole here, depending on your orientation with your chassis. I'm just gonna chuck it in that one there. A bit of a guess. And I use these uh, M6 flare nuts, so I don't have to bug around with a um, washer. The vacuum lines come pre-assembled from Rotax, they're awesome like that and we're going to put this little guy here onto the rave valve, this is for the power valve actuation and we're going to track that all the way back to the fuel pump, we're going to put this end on the fuel pump here, just like so. And then lastly but not least we're going to put this onto the crankcase. This is what gives the 
the pulse signal to the fuel pump which makes it move which pumps the fuel from the tank to the carburetor so to get these little um, transport caps off the off the motor just get a pair of snips now don't forget to give this one a bit of treatment so it goes over there and then we're going to fasten them all down with the zip tie get your circlet pliers and give those guys a little bit of a bit of a work out there and you should be able to slide that on piece of cake they are, it is incredibly tight tube and it requires a bit of a bit of work to get it all the way on So just to finish this job off, I like to put a couple of cable ties on the vacuum lines so they don't fall off. Just zip tie that up there and make sure it's tight. Use your side cutters and give them a little bit of, bit of a twist like so. Now we can install the vacuum line from the rave valve, which goes on here and goes across to the power valve. Now, you may notice that this one here has got nothing that's to atmosphere, okay? So it always stays open. Lastly, just tidy the job up using a couple of cable ties to hold the vacuum lines all nice and neat on the engine. Now for the final assembly of some of the auxiliaries, we've got the harness and battery bracket. We're gonna put the battery in that, fill this sucker with water, and we should be ready to go. So next up, mix up 700 mils of water with race coolant and tip that into the radiator. Fill the radiator up to the very top, screw in the cap, and then after a couple of heat cycles, double check the water level because sometimes it'll drop down once the engine gets hot. So next up, we're going to install the exhaust gasket sealing ring. Now these are graphite. They are new with the Evo engines. And what happens is sometimes if you try to force them on, they crack. So what I do is I deburr this edge with a bit of emery paper and put some oil onto the exhaust socket and then they just slide on and they don't crack. So get a little piece of emery paper and you just want to take the the sharp edge off this uh, exhaust gasket ring. You could use a file, but it'd probably be a bit too coarse. So just a bit of memory paper I find works a, works a treat for me. And um, we just do that. You can feel a bit of a sharp spot just here. I'm just gonna work that. It's probably where the join is. And that, it, it, it rubs down easy. It's pretty soft material. And gets it over your, all over your hands, so you just have to get a um, rag there and dry it all off, so it's all nice and nice and clean. And then get your oil can. This is just two-stroke oil, and just put a dab of that on there, and run that around the edge as much as you can, and a little bit on this guy. So now that you've deburred that, and we've got a little bit of oil on there, we should just Carefully stretch the ring over the exhaust socket and it's with a little bit of a wiggle. Don't force it on. There we go. And that's it. it. Didn't crack. Perfect. So we have the battery bracket here and we're just going to prep that ready to go on the car. So grab yourself a four millimeter Allen key. And this guy here just peels off. This is how it all came from Rotax. Just undo, undo all that. Like so, here's the charging port, so you can charge the battery. We're going to install that bracket there, and then we're going to get the chassis clamp that goes on top of the chassis rail, and then there is a bottom clamp that's going to go like this, and two M6 cap screws, one goes there like so. Now I'm not going to do them up super duper tight because I've only got to pull it apart to put it back on the go-kart anyway. But I just want to do that so that when I put the battery in here, which I'm about to do in a minute, uh, and screw that down, these things have to go in before. Otherwise you've got to pull it all out again to get those onto the chassis.
So our battery's had time to calm down since we put the acid in there. We're gonna put the caps back on, or on. So just roughly get them lined up and then slowly but surely tap them down with your hammer. Obviously, obviously don't whack the hell out of it. You just wanna give it a, a light tap just to get those all the way home. That's it, you're done. There's some insulation material here that you've got to put in. And it just goes in there like that. Everything fits perfectly, obviously, because it's Rotax and they think of great things. Now the battery has to have the terminals over to the coil side so that the harness can screw on here and here. I'm just, just putting that in there like that. Now I'm not going to screw these terminals on because I don't want the battery to go live and go flat while I'm waiting. So I'm just going to leave them out. This little guy here, this is for the ECU so you can run that harness down through there and bend it around and push the push the clip in there like so. Done. Now the last thing for the last job is to slide that through the little holes there and then just stretch it up over to the front get the allen key and screw it down So now we're up to the most important part of the whole project. It's the power of public sticker. We're just going to stick that on the radiator. So that everybody knows. It's awesome. Now we do have a couple of auxiliary parts here. That's for the exhaust mount and the fuel line and fuel filter and a throttle cable. So we're going to show you how to do that when we do the installation of the engine on the chassis. So there you have it. That's how you assemble all the auxiliary components on your Rotax Max engine. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and follow along at home. Also too, we have an Instagram and Facebook at Power Republic. Or go to our website www.powerrepublic.com.au, grab yourself a t-shirt or a Rotax engine. Thanks for watching, see you in the next video.